Hey, uh, welcome back to Dukes on Twitch. Back today with a bit of a card tech on a new card called Grist the Hunger Tide. Uh, this is a card that was printed in Mon Horizons 2. Uh, it is a three mana planeswalker, uh, but it is a creature uh, as long as it isn't on the battlefield, which is pretty huge. Uh, so let's go over this card and break it down for what uh, legacy players should be looking at and how to how to kind of give it a, a rating uh, in, in playability. So. Obviously, the give mana cost is quite nice. One, a black and a green uh, isn't too restrictive. Uh, sometimes Abzan can have an issue getting access to black mana early on. Uh, it usually puts you in a position where you're susceptible to Wasteland. Uh, but I think generally this is going to be a pretty easy card to cast in an Abzan version of Maverick. Uh, it's also something that we can cast as early as turn two, thanks to mana acceleration uh, in green Sons of the Dryad Arbor or mana dorks like Noble Hierarch of Birds of Paradise. Uh, and it's also a Planeswalker which gets under Gatoteague, which is something to definitely think about. Um, a lot of the Planeswalkers like Garuk, Vraska, Nissa are cards that you can't cast with a Gatoteague on the field. Uh, so in matchups where you might want both, maybe something like a Miracles uh, matchup where you want both Planeswalkers and a card like Gatoteague, that can come up. So Grist being 3 mana is, is really nice there. Uh, so the static ability, as long as Grit, the Hunger Tide, isn't on the battlefield, it's a 1-1 insect creature in addition to its other types, is really relevant as well. Uh, if it's in your deck and it's a creature, it means you can green suns for it, uh, it means you can fight it with once upon a time. Uh, so two pretty big factors, especially the green suns one. Uh, green suns is obviously a really powerful engine, and it means that if you have uh, one copy of a green creature in your deck, uh, and you have four green suns, you virtually have five copies. So the nice thing about Grist and uh, for the next few weeks of testing it is that even if you only put one copy in your deck to play with, you virtually have five copies and four ways to find it. Uh, so that's really nice because in the past with you know other three mana planeswalkers like Kaya, uh, you do want to up the number of them in your deck to see them and get some testing with them. But at the same time, you probably don't want to finish with that number. So if you're testing three or four, you're probably only going to run one or two. Uh, and Grist is really nice because uh, being a Green Suns target, adding that one copy in means you can virtually have five copies straight away. So uh, that's a, a really nice feat. Uh, for in your hand, uh, it doesn't really matter, um, but there are some things uh, to do with the stack that are interesting. Uh, this Planeswalker can't be hit with Force Negation because it is a creature spell. Uh, it also can't be hit by Spell Pierce, which is pretty interesting. Uh, because it's a creature on the stack as well, uh, Thalia will not tax it, which is interesting. So even with the Thalia in play, uh, you can cast this for three mana, which is really nice. Uh, and in, in a similar effect, Sanctum Prelate on three, uh, this won't be stopped because it's still a creature spell on the stack. Um, another thing to point out is the Graveyard. Uh, this as a creature in the Graveyard means that it can be eaten with Scavenging Ooze for a life and plus one plus one effects. Uh, and it can be returned with things like sort of Light and Shadow, which has seen minimal play in the past, but those sort of effects uh, do work well with a card like Grist, which of course is a, a creature. Uh, the plus one. So uh, you get a black, one, one black and green insect creature uh, that mills a <laughs> Sorry. You create a, a one, one black and green insect creature token, then mill a card. And if an insect card was milled this way, you put a loyalty count on Grist and repeat the process. Uh, I don't see the second part being something that's relevant for Maverick that doesn't really run insect creatures. Uh, so you're pretty much getting a 1-1 one, one and you're mailing a card. The 1-1 one, one is nice um, because in a Maverick build with something like Stoneforge Mystic, you can turn those pretty minuscule creatures that most opponents won't worry about into real threats. Uh, and also, uh, as a sort of Bitter Blossom type effect, those 1-1s one, by themselves might not be that great, but in a, a bunch, and you know, once you get four or five going, it is something your opponent is gonna have to answer. And if they're spending spells on uh, creatures that you just created, uh, you're gonna get some advantage there, which is really nice. Uh, the Miller card is really interesting as well, because uh, it is something you can set up with Sylvan Library, which is great. Uh, it does mill creatures, which is great for scavenging use, and it also might mill lands, which is great for another reliquary. Uh, this is, something that can also fire back on you, especially if you're looking for something like Caracas and you mill it. Uh, you might want to be thinking about running a card like Remnant Excavator in a list with Grist, just to make sure you can get things back that you really want. Um, so that's that's definitely pretty interesting. Also being a plus one 
on a three uh, three counter planeswalker to go straight to four means that this creature can go out, get out of bolt range straight away, which is really nice. Or oh, this planeswalker, sorry. Um, I guess the one ones also help against edict effects, which is pretty nice, and it also means that your cradle is going to be on a online uh, a lot more than without a card like crystal in the field uh, because there are definitely some awkward times where you have a cradle in play but you don't have creatures uh, so this is a great way to make sure that you can actually get those cradles uh, tapping for mana ASAP. Uh, the big downside I guess of just the one ones is that they do still run into sweeper effects uh, and cards like blazing volley which is seeing a lot of play out of delver sideboards but overall a uh, pretty nice plus one. Uh, the neg two, so you may sacrifice a creature when you do destroy target creature or planeswalker. So this is really nice because Maverick is definitely a deck that has to play with the hand you're dealt. So if you draw Collect Oof against Elves, if you draw Galactic against Death and Taxes or Mother of Runes against Eldrazi, you're going to have to play with those cards. Um, they might not do much, but you don't really have a way to shuffle them back or make use of them. Uh, and this is where Grist is really nice because it actually gives you an out. So that Mother of Runes wasn't doing anything, uh, it can now trade with something like a Thought Not Seer. Uh, you can sacrifice Collect Oof against Elves to take out one of their sort of main engine pieces, maybe a Wildwood Symbiote. Uh, and then of course, hitting Planeswalkers as well gives the deck a lot of reach. Uh, without red for things like Bolt or Punishing Fire or Red Elemental Blast, um, once a Planeswalker is in play uh, that is out of Abrupt Decay range, it can be quite hard for Abzan Maverick to deal with them. Uh, so something like Jace ticking up or Brainstorming can be pretty hard to deal with. So having the reach here is really nice. It's also really nice with Dried Arbor because it means that all your fetch lands now with Dried Arbor in the deck kind of become a removal removal spell, which is pretty sweet. Uh, speaking of Dried Arbor, this is obviously a little bit of overkill, but this with Dried Arbor and Ramen Up is really nice because you can keep getting the Dried Arbor back and, and destroying creatures of Planeswalkers at your will. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the neg 2 is also pretty good because it keeps the planes rocker 1, so you can actually neg 2 straight away and still keep the planes rocker around, which is really cool. Uh, the neg 5 ulti, each opponent loses life equal to the number of creature cards in your graveyard. This is something that I'm going to say is pretty irrelevant. I would say this is really just a 2 ability planeswalker with a static, not a 3. Uh, Legacy of, of, is obviously a place with a lot of exile spells. Cards like Source to Plowshares, uh, Sweepers like Terminus, uh, and when you're using your own Scoos as well, generally there aren't that many creatures in graveyards, especially in games 2 and 3, or at least in your graveyard. Uh, post board, you're probably looking at opposing uh, Oozes, or Relic of Progenitus, or Rips, or Bajuka Bogs. So the Neg 5 is definitely something not to really consider with this card. It might come up in a game, but I wouldn't say that the ultimate is a real reason to play this card. Um, I would say that the the main role of Gristin Maverick going forward uh, is probably going to be its ability to diversify your threats. So against a deck like Blue White uh, Control, where there's cards like Source to Plowshares, Sweepers like Terminus, it's really, really nice now to have a card like Grist uh, that allows you to Green Suns for a threat that isn't susceptible to those removal spells. Uh, a little bit like Clothis in... Punishing Maverick, uh, just a really nice way of making sure you can keep applying pressure on your opponent through multiple avenues. Because um, obviously Grist doesn't uh, get swept away from Terminus or, or S Supreme Verdict, uh, or he was Swords of Plashes or Fatal Push. Uh, so it can be a pretty hard permanent to answer um, when your opponent is geared to beat your creatures, which is really nice. So I really like that. Uh, overall, I think it's a, a pretty cool card. Um, I think it'll see a lot of play in Legacy over the next couple of weeks with people trying it out. Uh, maybe in Elves, maybe in Nathvik decks, but I do think that it has a pretty nice place in Legacy Maverick, and I'm pretty keen to see where it finishes. Uh, let me know your thoughts in chat. Let me know what you think about this card. Uh, if I missed any upsides or downsides, uh, I'd be very keen to hear it. But as always, take care, and... Uh, I'll hopefully be back to streaming soon. It's taking a bit of break, and uh, yeah, it was really good to talk. Catch you guys.